I'm John Billingsley, and you are listening to Beyond Track Podcast. What are some thoughts of yours towards the whole, like, is Star Trek getting too woke? The idea that a show that exists to push the boundaries in terms of what is acceptable and what is it, and what it should be like just part of our human condition, mm-hmm. which is, you know, everybody on the fucking ship, everybody on the fucking ship, as long as you're nice. To me, it's like you can't be too woke. Hey everybody, welcome to Beyond Track Podcast. This is Dag. I'm Renzo. I'm Watney. And I'm Aaron. And today, we're doing another riff track. If you don't know what a riff track is, we're going to watch Voyager Season 2 Episode Threshold on our end, and we're going to thrash the episode, or at least try to. In a few seconds, I'm going to count down, and when I say engage... You can watch the episode with us. Renzo, are you queued up? Ready. Watney. All hands. Aaron. Five by five. All righty. And Too three, cool. two, one, engage. Tappy, tappy, tappy. It's he looks, like he, he, he looks like he needs a cigarette. Like he's, he's handling that shuttle like it's a, like it's, it's pornographic for him. Look at that. Like it's. I feel like he's had academy accidents where he's like crash shuttles or something. Like this seems right up his alley. <laughs> well, this is his. I mean, this is his second identity, right? Nick Locarno died. Can we get the, a picture of the back of his chair again? Because I think they installed a kit on the back of his chair. If you're familiar with Knight Rider, but I don't think we're going to see that again. Yeah, probably not. Man, he's 9. doing. Nine point four. Nine point five. Whoever recorded this did a worse job than I did with this episode. Like, first shaky cam? Is this the first instance of, like, shaky cam? Nah, like, they, in Cloverfield? They... <laughs> oh. There's Kit. You see it right there on the back of his chair. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. I see it. You're right. <laughs> Michael. Michael. You, we Whee. can't sustain the turbo. We can't sustain the turbo boost, Michael. Dick Bay. <sighs> The look of the Voyager no, it's not. Never is pretty cool, but not as cool as TNG's. Yeah. yeah. The iconic yellow squares. The yellow grid. Oh, it's the holodeck. I was like, what the fuck? Where are they? That looks awesome. My background is apparently fluctuating. Oh, wow. I'm experiencing a time-space distortion. Pity. Ah, well. I wonder... That's a good intro theme. I wonder how it many Kelly cams good. they are away from that sun in that shot. <laughs> Kelly cams. Yeah. Are we Klingons? Are we Klingons? I am. I don't know about you. Mm. There we go. Now we're getting in character. Aaron has ridges. Like a Ruffles potato chip. Oh, damn. Like I hate going for some chips. <laughs> for whose pleasure are those? <laughs> It's listen. Not for friends, pleasure, for I honor. I mean, also, Give me honor. I need honor for my honor. <laughs> I mean, ribs take... for your honor. <laughs> oh man, I've been watching. Okay, I think we're done here. No. Great episode. <laughs> Great episode, everybody. Thanks for coming out. This has been Rift Treks. This is what happens when you make me watch the whole intro. The whole intro. <laughs> I mean, okay, you're, you're, yeah, it's true. Well, here's the point, and it's only like 600 kelichems wide, so. Yeah, it's a little bitty baby planet that should not exist. Yes, that is true. Because those rings are itty bitty tiny. Like, Voyager's a vacuum here. That's all it is. Yeah. Wait, it's a Roomba? I mean, it's got kind of the it right kind, shape. It kind of looks like a dust buster. Dude, Starfleet is now canon. We have starship Roombas that just go around cleaning up space junk. That's something I'd expect to see in Lower Decks. Like, how did they clean up Wolf 359 so fast? The Roomba fleet. Or maybe they reprogrammed uh, a planet killer to just go around and eat garbage. I mean, that's basically its job. That makes sense. Delicious and nutritious. So this episode starts out like okay yeah you know the concept for it's pretty good we found this new dilithium it's pretty neat we might go faster yeah we I'm gotta down. get home let's test I, like, it out this is this is indicative this is this is everything in voyager just like 
there's people are sitting around trying to get work done. Neelix comes over and is like, hello, I have coffee. I don't understand anything that any of you are saying, but I'll, you know, I'll, um, yeah, I can learn. I mean, teach me everything about quantum physics and, and, and fucking whatever. Zone and I'm going to provide insight that you otherwise would not have gleaned yeah. because I'm an outsider. Yeah. I just realized I can't read English. <laughs> <laughs> I we love Bolano. She's I have holographic translator yet. <laughs> she. My favorite Bolano line was, "Borg provokes Klingon. Klingon breaks Borg's nose." My favorite is "Get the cheese to stick, babe." Yeah, mm. a good one. Too. Yeah, there's <laughs> coffee in that nebula. Mm -hmm. So this is the clear exposition for the audience, and Neelix is right. the one going, uh, I don't understand techno babble. This is where Jack O'Neill's like, Carter, simplify it. Yeah. Dumb, you're up, you're here, I need you about here. <laughs> the wink of an eye. That's a Yo Mama joke, isn't not, it? Not the blink. Not the blink of an eye. The, the wink. wink of an eye. Yo mama's like warp 10 because she occupies every point in the universe simultaneously. That reminds me of like, <laughs> I <laughs> I was watching this documentary about this tornado that went through this town. There was this guy giving his testimonial. He's like, I saw my life flash between my eyes. <laughs> wow. And all the comments on the YouTube video were just like, did he say flash between my eyes? <laughs> It would have been way funny if he said, I saw my whole life flash between my thighs. <laughs> this might be one of those cases where it's all about uh, for all intensive purposes. Oh. Yes, intensive. Oh. There's well, a about... word for those kinds of words. I don't remember what all... it is. Wrong. I heard somebody say, all of the sudden once. All of a sudden. <laughs> Although there's one thing that uh, the two folks south of the border um, say a lot of that I... Uh, that I never heard until I started like speaking with Americans a lot was um, on accident. It is an egg corn. That is what that if you, word is. If you if you did something on accident. Mm. Guys, they just Neelix. they just Neelix Neelix somehow by by being dangerously unqualified has helped them solve some pivotal problem. There he is. Look, there's your there's your shot. Fake it till you make it, Neelix. That's that's and why in every some of that finger food. But that's why in every future that you see that's horrible, Neelix is wearing a Starfleet uniform. And that's why it's horrible. That's more important than that. The thing is, Neelix has the opposite of imposter syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way the computer would be able to simulate this. This is one of the most unbelievable yeah. things of the episode. The, if something's the entire, impossible, why the is entire, the computer able to simulate it? And the entire holodeck grid should overload and just blow up. Hey. The holodeck, can, <laughs> the holodeck can do a lot of things, like extrapolate evolution over a period of 65 million years for parasaurolophus. Also pretty wild. Also pretty wild. Yeah. Jane, yep, your that's face true. is so pretty. I like the hair in the bun in the early seasons. <laughs> the bun of steel. The hair. There's something under the hair holding it up like that, because hair doesn't just do that. It's um, it's it's a uh, it's a mortarboard. It's like a graduation hat. It's just. <laughs> I'm now going to expect Jane Way. And that's why if it's like now, just now Captain, hair. we need you to like she walks up in her like her dress uniform is like now to give our commencement address, Catherine Janeway, and she just pulls a thing out, her hair falls away, and she's got the hat on already. So she just tied her hair around her Starfleet graduation cap. Oh, of course. And, and of course, Amanda needs no introduction. Chicote, Hakuchi Moya. There's no way oh, to put back in the bottle. Hmm. <laughs> Carefully. Is there I'm going to be a salamander. Table? Is the script say I guess, I'm going to be think... a salamander by the end of this too? <laughs> but you know, and you know, you notice how she said, like, she's really downplaying it. You'll be one of a few elite pilots. I mean, I'm pretty sure he'd be the only person to ever break the warp ten barrier. So really, you should probably play it up a little more. They don't well, call it the... warp ten; they just call it Paris. The way We're she going said, to Paris. No, they've oh, gone to, he's he's gonna go plaid. Oh. <laughs> ludicrous speed. Truly, it's yeah. ludicrous. It's ludicrous speed, yeah. Voyager 1 has gone to plaid. 
why is he in a robe? No, 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 no. I no, really no, feel no, like no, I really no. feel like Janeway <laughs> set him up for this now. This whole episode <laughs> yeah. just feels just, like that now. It's just the captain comes in, he's in his robe. Oh, it's not my birthday, but <laughs> So that's what we mean by we'll always have Paris, huh? Oh Lord. Oh, and here's the here's the possible reason for his <clears throat> to a statistician that's terrifying 2% I'm sorry, my p-value is point zero zero five. It's not hard to explain. Not at all. Yeah, there you go. It's you just said ego. it. There you, there you go. Hard to explain, but let me make it very clear. <laughs> Immediately <laughs> after I end this sentence. It's, it's, it's hard to explain, but let me let me explain it His in a short, succinct sentence. His father's a pretty awful dad, though. Yeah. Oh there no! Are very he, few good he told dads in Star Trek. he told he told his son he was proud of him once. We got to see it on TV. Look how his son turned out. Mm. He, he turned into a salamander. He scored with his captain, though. <sighs> wow, acting. For your consideration, <laughs> Robert Duncan McNeil. Jeez. I'll do anything. Uh oh, she's got, the, she's got the. She almost had her orange as the new blackface on there for a second. Her orange as the new blackface is terrifying. She, yeah, red, red is, is red, red is, is fucking is, horrifying. Yeah. I agree with that. She's also Flemeth from, uh, <laughs> from Dragon Age, the, the Witch of the Wilds. Mm. Wait, what? Yeah, she's in the in the in Dragon House? Age. Oh, never mind. No, in the in the Dragon Age RPG series of Bioware. She does she's it really a, well. She's a pivotal character in those games. She's amazing. Who made that just, sound? Dag? Was Dag. that you? <laughs> I just, I'd like to see a shot it's from like Voyager. We build this fucking huge facility to detect gravitational waves as they cross over Earth, and it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hey, sound of going work done. A future Kazon trader. I, I think. I thought she was a great part of the crew, actually. I thought that when her character was involved in things, she was great. Seska and the actress, amazing job. Yeah. No, not Seska. The engineer sitting next to Belana there. He's the one who betrays the crew. Oh, is that who you're talking about? And okay. then Neelix tosses him into, like, some weird engineering thing. He's approaching the threshold. Here we go. Oh. You know they really they really need to cut that with, you know. Magic carpet ride by Steppenwolf, <laughs> in retrospect. You need to re or, remaster that with that song. Or you just do a shot from the top from the roof of the shuttle and do it like the Naked Gun, because if he can occupy all space and all time simultaneously, there's really good gags there where he's like you know going down the street through a car wash. <laughs> you know, just. I mean. Into like a locker room, and then like uh, in a, into a, like a in like a into like a San Antonio Spurs game. <laughs> but is it that he does occupy all space at the same time, or is it that he can occupy any space at any time? I mean, he can. Former, I, wouldn't he just cause like fusion just by being in the same location as something else? Just yeah. A, a second Big Bang because of all the annihilation of matter. <laughs> because he'd be everywhere. <laughs> oh. Whee! But what they didn't know is that 
there was a transporter accident because a salamander crawled into the transporter beam with him. Oh. And now here we are, Rick Berman's the fly. I mean... <laughs> so now we have to deal worst... with Paramander. Nice. No she just way. She just slap him. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, Star Trek. So the this... Doctor's... I mean... Can we please I really, do that? I really want you to to take that? notes on this medicine in the game. <laughs> He's I just think. asleep. His bed is so I don't see good. why not. Yeah. Wake up. <laughs> I just feel like there there'd be like just like a sheet of like dura steel or or uh, you know transparent aluminum just protruding some, from somebody's like, ruined chest. He's like, "He's just sleeping." So I don't think you're a doctor. I'm not. Mr. Paris, did you take shrooms before this trip? I'm very concerned that this was a hallucination. No, no, that's the He's... mycelial drive, not oh. the work drive. Wait Don't... a second. <laughs> what if this special dilithium taps into the mycelial network? It wouldn't be warp 10. Yeah. It'd be instant transit, but not the same thing. Well, except it's not. It's different because it's dilithium tapping into the mycelial network and not... Probably some kind of like other DMT. interface using the spores. Well, I wonder if this ex I wonder if this special dilithium was also set off by the burn then. <sighs> that would be really crazy if like there's a whole section of the delta quadrant that's just blacked out because the special dilithium was like worse the quadria. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, Tom Paris. Your brain was not equipped to handle the ex entirety of universal information in your little brain. Why has no one tried to go to warp ten before? Oh, because of the dilithium. It's the special yeah, dilithium that can yeah. yeah that can sustain reactions at higher te higher temperatures. Also, they didn't have a talaxi and cook aboard. That's true. Yeah, he needs to. Dem, dem, something something coffee something something today's lunch dark matter nebula oh that's it neelix coffee pour coffee in the engines what the see and i was hoping that two fix took place <laughs> I don't before know this. i i don't know what i don't know what that is Wadi. i think oh okay there is a cat oh i okay it's, it's my kitty. It's Evie. I see. Oh, it, she's, she's coming oh, over. She's going to the heated blanket. Coming she's at you in the bottom left corner. It is Evie the cat. Evie the domestic short hair. Versus <laughs> seven of <laughs> nine. Nails just got trimmed. <laughs> there he is. Going to the vet that tomorrow. Guy, right Go check there. <laughs> that dude's on cameo now, and he's like, hey, I was in Star Trek. And I'm like, you traitor. I was in Threshold, okay? $300 a pop. The classic. <laughs> what was it like to sit in that chair and turn around eerily? Was that filmed <laughs> during a scene, or was that like an after thing? What about any funny moments that happened on set? Are you making fun you of still... me? That's what I asked. No, you. I'm not. I'm making fun of every... Do you still... I'm making fun of every... every... <laughs> Every Trek actor who's like, stop, don't ask me about funny things. What's your happen. what's your favorite what's your favorite moment of the moment you were on Star Trek? <laughs> what was your favorite moment? I like dying. <laughs> the one where I turned around in the chair. I like dying yeah, because it meant I wasn't coming back. I was uh, was gonna give him a little Belushi with my eyes, you know. But <sighs> uh... So how much Aquanet is in Bailana's hair right now? Do you guys ask the guys that question? Yes. How much Aquanet is in Captain Picard's hair right now? <laughs> it's a wig, so probably not much. That is true. Look at this cat. Unfortunately, the he guys is here. Hold on. the guys don't get the cool long poofs that the women get, and I don't know. I 
can't talk. Finally, Tom Paris shuts up. Whatever. I would hang out with the doctor all the time. That's the only place I would be. Caffeine headache, man. That's Instantly sick. has the blue... Blue veins. The medical team is in the mess hall. Yeah. It's true. Paris. The... <laughs> okay. <laughs> pull, out of the, pull out of the sick bay. We need a medical team there. Uh, just call Paris. He'll he'll deal with it. <laughs> but wait, where's Kess in all this? Couldn't she be helping? Where the hell is Kess? I don't know. DUI. DUI. You're funny. Stop. <laughs> ah, stop. <laughs> oh god I feel so bad for her <laughs> but yeah, also not didn't she commit a crime I mean she mm -hmm. like, actress... she, like ex exposed herself in front of a playground full oh, of kids oh yeah 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 Jennifer yeah. Lien has had a very trying. serious struggle with mental health issues that is for been sure been trying for her yeah oh, oh. interstitial here. fluids those are the fluids mm. between the fluids holographic lungs <laughs> That was a really cool concept. It was cool, yeah. I like how they're just so calm and cool while he's in, like, agony. No pain reliever, nothing. Not gonna work. He's suffocating. Just hurry it up there. You're directly tied into the ship. You don't have to say anything. Yeah, I know. Bassar <laughs> was way cooler than this. <laughs> Absolutely. The star was more advanced. I suppose that's true. They probably had some kind of, um, what do you call it when you separate drives, like a partition between the EMH's program and the rest of the ship, just in case there was a corruption? Yeah, some so. firewalling or something. So he said something about the ravioli in his lungs can't process oxygen anymore. Put him in a... But I think... Put him in a, a I bowl think, of cheese. I think... If you just take the ravioli out of there, because I don't think it should be in there in the first place, it should probably be in the fridge. But no, I'm it sorry. should be in my belly. We can't do that because of the Parm Directive. Ooh. I can't feed that. <laughs> I love how the holographic doctor... Just hey! Zip, 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 through the force fields. It's mm -hmm. great. Kess is back. Me bail. Kess, can you use your burgeoning mind powers Me to unmute Aaron? <laughs> I'm sorry. What'd you say, Aaron? So? He said Kess made bail. That's why she's back. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she's been in the. I, I like her time. outfit. Look at that. She does. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. does look good. So I'm assuming that Paris is a direct I, descendant of Fry's brother. I just I thought Jeff Goldblum was in this movie. Don't get it. Fly, Fly. away. Um, I want to get away. I want to fly away. Jeff Goldblum, 1986. It's not a my program. Are we just admitting that that I can't even talk about this now? I just it's thank you, thank you. It's Awkward. stop stop talking. Just stop. <laughs> stop talking, I don't need to know that. So I don't has anybody ever wondered why Ella would be like, go on. <laughs> <laughs> For science. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? And then what? Awkward. 
backwards. In these early seasons, wasn't Paris trying? Yeah, he was. He was trying to get with Kess, remember? He was trying to pull I don't, from, yeah. From it wasn't Helix, this right? early? Because I remember that, like, Kess was like, I need to be independent. And Helix was like, yeah. no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel obligated Even to say Kess is two. <laughs> but it's normal for, like, their life cycle. They only live to be, How like, six or seven, live? so. Yeah, seven nine. years. Seven to nine. I did. I did. So, zap. Now She's that I'm thinking, now that I'm thinking zap. about what he was saying through this whole rambling stream of consciousness, which is indicative of his brain shutting down piece by piece. Um, I don't know why he needs to like split up talking about remembering crying in his room and then losing his virginity because that. Maybe they happen in the same they, time. They, they, but, well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe his DNA is unraveling, Aaron. Do you think about that? I mean, you're the doctor. This is true. You're the doctor. That's I'm... also true. Shit. That's why I don't play the doctor. <laughs> it's my... <clears throat> it's my professional opinion that... Uh... He can shut <clears throat> the fuck up. Let's see. Uh, time of death for this episode: twelve forty-five a.m. Atlantic Standard Time. Hey, you know if this uh, July 9th, twenty twenty-one. If this starred Gerard Butler, we could just call this "Paris Has Fallen" because he mm. has done those string of all those can, movies. Yes, Olympus, and can, has et cetera, fallen. Yes, you can. You can see yourself out. Only if he's wearing the Phantom mask. <laughs> those movies were not great. Slowly, gently, evolution caresses. Oh dear. <laughs> something, something. Webbing Salamander on your fingers. Salamander, spare your face sign. away <laughs> from the garish light of day. Let your helmsman turn into <laughs> a slimy slug. Then you'll have a Paris on a mug. I don't Listen know what to I'm doing. the music of Warp Nine. <laughs> you should write a whole musical about this, one. <laughs> this could be a threshold. The the, the aria. Just... <laughs> Voyager on ice. Ar aria of threshold. <laughs> something like that. It'll be like that episode Muse where Bellana just inspires somebody <laughs> to write a whole bunch of fucking plays. All about the Kuvachma? Yeah. What am I sick bay? I've got some killer dandruff here. You got any tea gel? Ah! I'm allergic to cats, Doc. Oh, oh, this is for, yeah. This is just. He's just. Like, Warp, Warp 10 just turns you into, like, some kind of Cronenberg monster. He he died, but what he's worried about is his hair falling out. I yeah, know, what the not fuck? Not totally crazy. I, I mean, the season two Tom Paris, you can tell he was going to lose that war anyway. <sighs> Brutal. Hey, if he's got two hearts, can we remove one of them and put it on ice for transplant if we need one in the future? And a kidney? I'll take a kidney. Liver for some people, right? Here he goes. Oh. Uh. oh my god, that doesn't even look like him. Oh wait, it's not him. <laughs> I mean, he's a human. He's just being a traitor. I thought it was Paris for some fucking stupid reason. Because <laughs> well, his he did, hair was he didn't tussled, mutate. I thought he was I mean, like... he's he's turning... Look, he's very he's clearly very salamander-like in this picture, so... <laughs> this... The Kazons are really just Delta Klingons. They no. remind me of clickers from The Last of Us. Oh. The, the fungus heads. Yeah. Yeah. Gross. They didn't have a lot of water, so this stands to reason why their hair's so effed up. Couldn't condition. Yeah. I mean, look at that bun of steel. My god. 
perfectly quaffed. All those sonic showers. We haven't said anything in like 30 seconds. That's how amazing yes, this is. Yes, because that's how he, that's how enthralling the it's, doctor. It's the Robert Fitargo, best actor. Oh, yes. True, true, this very true. is the truth. It's, it's. You can tell they're theater actors by how they like carry themselves around the screen. Positioning themselves. Chew the scenery. <clears throat> no, they're not Ricardo Motaben. <laughs> he really chews the scenery. Or... Oh, what tasks. was the actor who played Chang? He tasks me and I shall Christopher have Plummer. Him. Christopher uh, Plummer was another who could definitely chew the scenery. Did you see him in Knives Out? Because that was badass. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. I love Knives Out. It's a great movie. Never seen it. Chang versus Captain America. It's a great mystery. It's it wonderful. Really is good. It's up there with Murder on the Orient Express. I agree. I agree with this assessment of this episode. Sorry, that's too <laughs> Vic's whining. I can hear. That's. It. He sounds lovely. What I'm becoming will <laughs> Is his head pulsing? Yeah. Holy crap, his head is pulsing. 30 years, I've never noticed that before. He's got an air bladder behind his head and down the back of that jacket. There's like a guy sitting behind the med table going pump, 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 pump. I mean, it's good work, right? Like, you can't look a job in the in the mouth like that. Wow. He's doing that Telosian thing. <laughs> he True. evolved into a Telosian and went right past yep. it to Salamander. Mm -hmm. This is what a killer headache looks like. This is this is. I just this it's so. The fuck. Right fucking here. <laughs> are we are we doing are we doing the tongue moment in like ten seconds or something? Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah. I'm gonna talk first. Man, he's just going back and forth between paranoia and acting, not. I am an actor. Here we go. What? Cat's got a hairball. This really is like Halloween special. Oh. And this happened to him <laughs> after after having tried marijuana only once. It's the <laughs> devil's lettuce. No, he pulls his own tongue out. The cabbage I forgot is about sin. this. His subconscious was like, Tom, will you just shut the hell up? Yeah. <laughs> the writers were like, we don't know how to end this scene, so we're just going to make him pull out his own tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the only way we can get him to stop talking. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Hey, doctor. I need a pepperoni pizza. With Caribbean olives. <laughs> he does have something weird in his mouth. Like half a tongue, but still weird. I wonder what they use to keep him from talking like normally for this. I think they just have something obstructing his mouth. Naturally. That's what I'm saying. I wonder what it was. Uh -huh. Oh. 
You can clearly see his tongue in there. <laughs> this is a prime example of a dude that's got meanings without words. He's talking a whole lot, but he's not saying much. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, you're everything, but right now you're Vidian? Hey. Just peel off he a piece or two. He's every woman. Puppy. No, why don't we just why don't we just throw Tom into a transporter with a sample of his old DNA and do the Pulaski thing from a natural selection? And do... I know, I know. I'm Voyager, sure I don't, I... Voyager deleted the second season of TNG, so they don't know about Pulaski, but... Yeah. That was uh, Data's way of getting even with her. He just <laughs> deleted every reference in the Starfleet database to her. Yeah, she just... She got extraordinary renditioned somewhere. Wow. <laughs> just... I mean, he was he was always being abused by her. She was a bully. Yeah, she was a bully. I mean, by the end of the season, I think they had found some kind of footing. Yeah, she was basically tried to be like female McCoy. It was a very weird character. I, I do. I really yeah. liked. I really loved Pulaski, but that whole the whole the um, holy shit! I forgot about the like the extensiveness of the prosthetics. It's, um, now Bring him like, down uh, again. Quite gets drying. Mm, hello, Kermit the Frog here <laughs> on the Starship Voyager. Can somebody? All right, Gerard? somebody. Somebody needs to miss Bobby <laughs> because he's starting to dry out again. <laughs> you like cast with like a spray bottle? Yeah. I thought that was coming from him for a second. And just like, God, these biobeds, they don't make sorry, it like they used to. Pup. <laughs> oh no, that's He's um he's like a deep he's... one now. Sort of. He busted out of the chamber, yo. Salamander's going off to Sunkatze. Now it's the Salamander versus the champion without a name who is the rock. <laughs> the boulder is complicated now. The screen is so Wait, you notice how that like how that Cameo. phaser burned? Like just how it, how it just bent? Like no. the beam bent? Yeah. Phaser beams yeah. work weird. They don't they don't stream out. It's like a sword if they wave they, them around. They work according to the plot, not the physics. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm. Like transporters. And warp. Sometimes Check it's medicine. no left, no right. You can only fly straight, according to Tom Paris. And then other times they go in circles. And <laughs> um, artificial gravity. That's just magic. All powers offline. You're still sitting down. Just inertial <laughs> dampers. Also yeah. magic. Yeah. Chest bump. She knocks she's, out really she, easy. I mean, she's uh, she's a WWE referee. You just you breathe on them they go down that's just oh god it's so true she's such a fragile little flower she just collapses and you just slide his wheeze <laughs> kate's like hey i don't have to say anything for the end of this episode great i'm just gonna lay well, she here. didn't do the like she, I get to she, be she, bridal didn't, she didn't even swoon yes sign me up I get to look really cute, splaying out on the floor. Boy, it's good. It's it's really good that your um, you know, your advanced evolutionary phase lacks the uh, opposable thumbs and and articulated fingers that you would need <laughs> to work a shuttle to get the warp in in the first place. Man, you know what they should have done as soon as ter t uh, Paris broke three and started harassing stuff? Just be like, computer, switch everything to voice input only. I am Kong Perrin. No, he hasn't <laughs> been able to hack things with his super advanced brain. He can just like hack oh, things. Oh, like yeah. Thing. There we go. 
shaky cam with no problems with the structural integrity or stuff. Shaky cam doesn't have any impact on inertial dampeners, which is nice. But it's it's funny that the, if the ship is clearly shaking, none of those guys are reacting to it at all. Just, I mean, when the ship gets hit, everybody leans in the correct direction. That's got to be the director doing it, right? They've gone trans warp, so they're at ten. We. But I mean, trans warp is not warp ten, though. That's the thing. It's that's true. <laughs> Dreamy. Great transition. Good transition. Mm -hmm. She ascended. Now she's hanging out with Daniel Jackson. <laughs> Hi, I'm able to extrapolate evolution without any concept of selective pressures over time. Even though this is unprecedented in the history of Federation science, I know what is. I know what's happening. I know exactly what's happening. In here. fact, it's downright impossible. You know, but in this universe, the preservers seriously just wanted us to turn into salamanders because it's like the pre-stage before we become founders. Right? No, you get you you get. This is what happens. Like they go to all these planets, and it's like, fuck humanoids again. We just like, when are we getting like? I want fucking salamanders. Why not get these? We can't be evolving towards more crabs. Is. What's that? There we On go. On Earth, many yeah. things in the oceans are evolving towards crabs. Yeah. All crustaceans can be turning into crabs. It's really weird. Everything wants to be a crab. Maybe in the Delta Quadrant, it doesn't really be a want, salamander. Though. It just happens to be the optimal form. Yes. Humans were like, I don't want to be a crab anymore. Yeah, I just, I haven't heard, t like, just, they're just puppets. So, I'm an oxalotl? Because I've got gills. Big axolotl. Yeah, it's fine. They have axolotls that size in Monterey. You can find them under your barbecue every season. Hey, 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 we don't have any drugs. Whoa, whoa, the five O's here. Run! <laughs> Ow. Mm. You bitch. They just, they just don't... My name is They don't Dottie. seem to you be all that me. involved. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. They're demonstrating no, you know, advanced abilities. They're just slimy lizard things. I feel like that's natural in the next stage of human evolution. <laughs> it's slimy lizard things? Yeah. Oh, boy. What in the Obviously. Egg? Obviously, Ugh. they slither. It's so disconcerting. No, nope, we're just gonna scrap it. No log needed. Easy. Three, 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 three or four babies in there too. We didn't take them. We have no idea if they'll live. Another job well done. So let's talk about the prime directive implications of leaving the three offspring alone on that planet, right? Yeah, and that's got to be a violation. Has to be invasive yeah. species. I'm really concerned wow. that in three Five, days they so. got it on, gestated, and had kids. They're very evolved. That's how they, uh, you know, yeah, they yeah. probably just decide <laughs> that kids exist and they they exist. They will them. Poof, kids. Man, if it was that easy. And now for the most awkward talk. Yeah. Yes, Tuvix, I agree. Yeah, Tuvix is totally right on this one. <laughs> but what I mean is it wasn't that memorable. <laughs> God, Jesus. This is so horrible. What the, what? Don't stop. Wow. Oh.
Oh, oh, that's just like that's it. Sleep your way to the top, Tommy boy. Get in there. <laughs> that was my plan all along. This was all a ruse. Yeah. All the ruse. Janeway just got to drop that alpha stare. <laughs> Overwhelmed, you know, being turned into a lizard person that overwhelms a person. Janeway needs to be like, hey, so since we figured out this whole weird ass shit, can you just put us all in stasis and let's go? Or why even bother with stasis? The doctor has a way to fix it. Just yes. take the whole crew there and then tell Starfleet, here's how you fix it. Right. Yeah, done. And, and presumably, if they found the dilithium that allowed them to break the, tra the, the warp 10 barrier... Why don't they take some of that and use that to increase their warp speed to warp 9.9999999? Talking this about structural failure. Dumb shit yeah. right now. Like, they literally were animals like a couple hours ago. Mm hmm. And he was totally able to, like, completely restore their neural patterns as well. And, and just another just chatting about it like it's just a, another day Seriously, at the office. Seriously, off screen, a... they must have, they, they had to have pulled the Pulaski maneuver. Just throw them in the transporter and splice them with some of their original DNA. It's the predis it's it's how the doctor yeah, knew how to do the good. Tuvix thing. So This is my favorite part of the episode. The credits, yeah. <laughs> Yikes, my people. Oh no. <sighs> so So there's a reason this is considered one of the worst episodes. Because it is, because of the yeah. implication. Like there's a um, watch it. Episode. There's a it, whole it, it, sect. <laughs> there's a whole sect out there of Kazons who decided to use the technology that the traitor sent them, and they all became salamanders. Mm. But did they become salamanders? Because they're not humans. They wouldn't evolve along the same lines. Yeah, but the preservers seeded all the planets. That's our final form. Do we know that the that the Kazons were seeded by the preservers? Yes. Uh oh. They seeded the galaxy. They have humanoid form. They might have been a few billion years late to the table, but there they are. <laughs> There's so many things wrong. I am going to give this episode a 1 out of 10 expelled tongues. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, um, Renzo, what do you want to give it? So... The only one in my book for Star Trek, though, is Spock's brain. So for me, this one's a two, but it's two air bladders under the skin out of ten. Okay. <laughs> dope. One for each set. Dope, dope, dope. I'm going to... I'm going to give that... I'm going to be generous. I'm in a generous mood. Giving mood. I'm going to give that four... Salamander black those blackout bang sashes out of ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. Salamander blackout bang sessions? Yeah. Good alliteration. Wow. Come on. That That's a good name for a band. I'm I'm gonna give this three stolen Night Industries two thousand Vox boxes out of ten. But Michael. But Michael. Yeah, see? If they'd have had Kit, they wouldn't have got into this mess. <clears throat> Kit would have just come back and be like, yeah, it's totally possible. Hop in. <laughs> that that car was the best high school principal that ever was. <laughs> Mr. Feeney, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's Threshold, man. I mean, it, there's a reason it's so notorious uh, among the fan crowds. It's just boggling on multiple levels. Like you said, Wadi, at the beginning, it starts out well. Nice notion. You know, let's do that thing. And then just... Bleh. It really starts to go the other direction when Paris gets beamed into sickbay after he goes warp 10 and Janeway's like, can you wake him up? And the doctor's like, wake up! I don't see why not. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he wakes up. Like, he was literally just fucking asleep. 
sleep. So what like, you're saying is we it's could just... It's funny. That's funny as shit. Funny. Absolutely. It's but funny, but in the early seasons, like... the Doctor's bedside manner was not great. Like, very not great. <laughs> was, it really, for me, it was like, this. is this episode self-aware? I was kind of thinking that at one point but then it really showed me well let's not forget lower decks had a reference to this too right there was a couple salamanders in the one episode about the medical colony the farm yeah yeah it's i i really just felt like when the doctor leaned over to wake up tom he should have been like computer initiate asmr program paris 5 hello tom this is the doctor i'm here about your shift no no it's okay you don't need to put clothes on and janeway's like what (laughs) I feel like Paris's like ASMR program would be like just cars revving. Revving, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Janeway's would be the sound of coffee dripping from like an instant coffee machine. <laughs> yeah, like. What, oh, yes. What's Tuvix that? Is screaming. <laughs> oh no, Tuvix is screaming. Uh, I said his name, and now yeah, I know like... that's so cute. And Chakotay is just repetitiously Akuchi. Oh uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, good old threshold. <sighs> All right. Well, that was a riff track brought to you by Beyond Track Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Uh, join us again next time. We're gonna riff another episode of something probably track related because that's the name of the series. But before we go, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Stephanie Baker, S. Tam, Anne Marie, and Jim Cook for being our Patreon and Anchor supporters. We really appreciate your involvement with the podcast. Thank you so much. And we will catch you on the flip side. We are Beyond Trek Podcast. Lower your inhibitions and surrender your years. We will add inspirational and hilarious Trek content to your day. Your attention will adapt to subscribe to us. Resistance is futile.